Final Exam, an Avatar The Last Airbender fan fiction. Chapter 1. The pastoral field had a beauty that would have made even the hardest of souls pause and smile. Tall wildflowers swayed and bowed their heads in honor of the breeze that rippled from one end of the field to the other. Birds migrated from other more seasonally afflicted parts of the world, called out from hidden locations. Their joyous songs erupted from the tall grasses as if the train itself was singing. The sun's rays shone with gentle warmth, and on a day like today, it would be easy to believe that the sun spirit was giving a benediction. All of this ambience was lost, however, on the twelve students standing in a straight line in the center of a field. The young archers ranged in both size and age, but as their instructor counted off, they moved as one. It was a drill of unity and focus, one of the many that the prospective Yu Yan endured. Everything was in sync, from their simultaneous actions right down to the rhythm of their breathing, all the same and all in time with their instructor's count. One, two, three. Arrow. One, two, three. Draw. One, two, three. Release. Keeping pace with the instructions, the students systematically reached into their quivers for arrows, smoothly knocked and drew back their bowstrings, and loosened their missiles. There was no room for thought, for variance, for individuality. Their arrows flew across the field as one, and as one, they struck dead center on 12 individual straw targets, having the previously shot arrow. Unlike a normal gathering of young teenagers, this group made no conversation. The only voice heard was that of the instructor, the slight twang of bowstrings, the high-pitched whistle of 12 simultaneously released arrows, and the sharp crack of splintered shafts made a mockery of the otherwise peaceful surrounding. Not that the students noticed such things anyway. They only had ears for their master, eyes narrowed from years of being a Yuyan archer. Master Shiyun kept a careful eye on his pupils, not the protective eye of a mother hen, no. Shi Yun's gaze could more appropriately be compared to that of a lion hawk. He circled and watched, constantly seeking the weakest of the group to single out and descend upon. He paid only scant attention to the targets. Students who couldn't consistently hit a bullseye after the third year were culled from the ranks before the beginning of the fourth year of training. These were mostly fifth years and at this range their level of accuracy should be a given. No, Shi Yun's watchful eyes were searching for inattentiveness, for any pupil who lagged behind or jumped ahead of his measured count. They had been shooting steadily for several hours now, arms were starting to tire, concentration was waning, and sooner or later someone would slip. To be a Yu Yan meant to be the best of the best, the first to falter would incur an appropriate punishment. Shi Yun paused at the end of the row of students. He hesitated slightly before beginning his count again, looking for any who would start reaching for an arrow without his consent. A black brow furrowed down as no one moved. Giving a mental sigh that was tempered by a touch of teacher's pride, he commenced the drill again. The standard punishment for falling out of rhythm was an extra hour of the obstacle course drills. He decided that if no one failed within the next half hour, the whole group would be subjected to that fate. After all, to be a Yuyan was a constant striving towards perfection. Standing at one end of the line, her back warm from the afternoon sun, 14-year-old Shiori felt her patience begin to slip as Master Shiyun began his repetitive count for the umpteenth time. A tickle of breeze rippled across the surrounding grasses, tugging a few stray strands of her shoulder-length mouse-brown hair. Unable to brush the hairs out of her face, she narrowed her reddish-brown eyes in frustration as her nose started to itch. Her hair was straight but also fine, and although she tried her best to keep it in a tight braid, more often than not it managed to escape its confinement, slipping around her headband to dance across her nose. This is so boring. 
she reached for yet another arrow. Normally, Shiori enjoyed archery, and making perfect shots usually gave her a thrill of happiness, but this monotonous exercise was definitely taking the joy out of the activity. They could have at least made the targets more challenging. Located 60 yards away, the oft-replaced circular targets were obscured only by the bowing heads of the tallest weeds. Of course, by now, those obstacles had been mostly lopped off by the passing arrow's sharp heads. Boring. The thought was dangerous. She knew it would be enough to warrant a punishment if the instructor happened to see it in her eyes. Shiori was of average height, but small in comparison to the 11 other students. It was a subtle clue to her status. The blatantly obvious one was the fact that her headband was the fourth year color of gold rather than the red color of her feller archers. She was one of the only fourth year students permitted to participate in the archery lessons of the fifth years, and Master Shiyun had made it no secret that he did not like it. He would need little excuse to punish her, most likely with calisthenics, tree climbing, or with the physically grueling obstacle course. Of course, anything would be better than standing here all day, making pointless shots. She released her arrow at the spoken command. It flew across the field to strike the knocked end of the preceding arrow, splitting it in twain and pushing part of it out the backside of the target. Piles of splintered arrows lay at the bases of the targets. They were the hard, handcrafted work of the first and second year students. Weeks of labor destroyed in a single afternoon. Shiori had lost count of how many had been shot this day. But she was mostly through her third bundle, which meant close to 90. The ache between her shoulder blades suggested that the lesson should soon be over. Master Shiyun would push them all to the breaking point, but never over it. None of the masters here were that cruel. Their goal, as they liked to remind the students every now and again, was to find the handful of individuals in each group who were actually worthy of joining the ranks and becoming Yu Yan. At the end of each year of training, most of those who left the islands were students who chose to give up. The rest had failed that year's exam. Everything here was about training and perfection. Even this, the repetitive and rhythmic knocking and shooting of arrows had value, although Shiori still hated this exercise. One, two, three, arrow. One, two, three. Draw. One, two, three, release. At the spoken command, she let fly yet another arrow, watching it split the last one embedded in the target. Her eyes narrowed minutely as the arrow did not split into even halves. Her lack of focus and muscle fatigue were beginning to be reflected in her accuracy. And if she noticed this, Master Shi Yun surely would too. She stood at the ready, her weight evenly distributed between her two feet, which had not yet shifted from the open stance she had assumed at the beginning of training. Shi Yun paced back down the line of students, tall and lean. He did not need the Red Hawk's design painted around his eyes to look fierce. His walk was slow, deliberate, and the students could do nothing but remain at the archer equivalent of attention until he gave word to do otherwise. Shiori's back twitched as he came to stand behind her. She focused on keeping her breathing even and calm, although her heart beat a rising crescendo in her chest, and her hand gripped the bow with far more force than necessary. Ren, that shot was unworthy. One extra hour, obstacle course. The words were spoken quietly, but everyone else in the group felt grateful that they were not the first to fall. Even though the temptation was to look towards the guilty one, their eyes remained riveted on the individual targets. The Yu Yan did not falter because one of their own fell. They simply moved on. Shiori allowed the breath she had been holding to hiss out. Her own shot had been worthy of a scolding. She wondered how much worse Rin's had been. This time, she would make the shot perfect. The instructor was spreading out his count now, making them freeze in place with the arrows drawn back to their faces. Shiori's back muscles protested the strain. She was pushing the bow away from her with the palm of one hand and pulling back the string with the other, 
The arrow, a mass of potential energy, lay between her two first fingers, knocked in, tucked into the string, which in turn was latched onto the tips of her slightly bent digits. She breathed. It was important to breathe. And held the pose as seconds stretched and her body begged to release the tension. A small blue form darted into her peripheral vision. She frowned, keeping her eyes focused on the target, but also remaining aware of the object. As Shi Yun held his silence between the word draw and the beginning of the countdown to release, Shiori risked a look. The small, brilliantly colored creature zigzagged from one flower head to the next, flying in seemingly random bursts and pauses as it ceased its chaotic movements to hover in the air above a white daisy, Shiori's memory gave a sudden jolt. She had seen one of these before, with Keske, long ago. It was a blue-throated hummingbee, a small nectar-drinking insect that was very rare in the Fire Nation. Their mother had apparently told Keske a story about the legend of the creatures. He had tried to recount it only to discover he had forgotten all the details. Curiosity satisfied, she refocused on her target, just as Shiyun resumed his count. One. Two. The hummingbee entered her direct line of sight, hovering just to the right of her target before dropping directly below it. Seeing a blue-throated hummingbee is special, Shiori. Because... Uh, because... The earnest smile faded as the boy searched for a reason. A cloud passed over the formerly eager features. Tears suddenly began to rain down. Three. Because mom said so. The girl gave herself a mental shake, bringing her target back into sharp focus. Only that mattered. Only the end of the last arrow. Everything else became an indistinct blur. Release. A fraction of a second. She held on to her arrow a fraction of a second just long enough for the creature to move out of her way. Shiori noted with satisfaction that despite all the distractions, this time her arrow hit dead on. The humming bee was disturbed by the arrow's passing, but it was unharmed. Keske would have been proud, she was sure. Unfortunately, the price of its tiny life had been to throw off her timing for a fraction of a second. And that, that was what Shiyun noticed. Shiori, your timing was off. One extra hour, obstacle course. But, unable to help herself, the 14-year-old began to protest. After all, it wasn't as if she hadn't been paying attention. She had thrown off her shot deliberately in order to spare the humming bee's life. One of her hands flew up to cover her mouth as her ruddy eyes widened. Talking without permission was expressly forbidden to the students on Sumetra Island. Only when directly queried by one of the instructors could a trainee speak. It was a basic rule, one of the first taught to the students when they began their training and one that remained in full effect throughout the duration of their five years on the island. Even a full-fledged Yuyan often maintained their habit of silence after their final year of apprenticeship. Stupid, stupid, stupid! Shiori stood frozen, waiting for Shiyun's anger to descend upon her. To break such a basic rule, it was beyond careless of her. But to do so in front of Shi Yun of all people? That was just plain idiocy. Especially given the way he felt about her special status. About being allowed to train alongside his fifth year students. She could feel his gaze boring into her. Even without raising her eyes from their locked position on the ground, the cheerful songs of the birds seemed to mock her as the silence amongst the archers stretched. Stupid. One extra hour of the obstacle course, and one extra hour of calisthenics. She breathed a sigh of relief. That wasn't so bad. Sure, she would be sore and tired afterwards, but the so-called punishment would only be severe enough to make her stronger in the long run. One step closer to becoming a true Yuyan. And we will be discussing your behavior with Master Zorin. Shiori flinched as the proverbial other arrow fell. Master Zorin was the head instructor on Symmetra Island. It was by his good graces that she had been permitted to improve her technical skills with the fifth years. Without them, she would have had to rejoin the fourth years, or worse, leave the island entirely. Shi Yun squinted at the sun. That is enough for today. Clean up the broken arrows and report for dinner. 
Ren, Shiori, I'll see you two in the obstacle course directly after. The students made no response. They simply abandoned their stances and moved forward to start collecting the valuable metal arrowheads. The splintered shafts were placed into nearly empty quivers. No one spoke, not even after Master Shiyun departed the field. No one offered sympathetic glances to the ones that had failed. Everyone on the field had the same goal, to become a Yuyan archer, but only a few of them would make it. Only the very best of the best. That made everybody else in direct competition. As Shiori finished placing the pieces of broken arrows back into her quivers and began to disassemble her target, she wondered if her brother had ever been in this much trouble. Probably not, she decided. After all, Keske had already graduated. He was already a Yuyan. Final exam was written by Magnus Ray. Avatar The Last Airbender is owned by Nickelodeon, Michael Dante DiMartino, and Brian Konietzko. The narrator for this story is Samantha White. The voice of Shiyun is Sleifnir. The voice of Shiori is Drew Hill. The voice of young Keisuke is Gemma Mushington. According to the author, the book Bow and Arrow by Larry Wise was used to determine the archery specifics presented in this chapter, including distance and number of arrows shot. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next week.